Hi everyone, I'm Jessica. I'm the creator of BahadiLife.com, your internet source for major transformation for the mind, for the body, and for the soul. So today I wanted to talk about something that I hear everywhere and it affects all of us and at some point in our lives and when it does it's hard to heal from and it typically just changes the course of everything it changes who we are and it's inevitable it is unavoidable it is transform transformational but once this happens in your life there is no going back and that's not necessarily a bad thing and I want to um, help you to understand the process and why and what you can do to feel better and to attract more love into your life and the subject is what happens when you get your heart broken and what do you do to open your heart again so when when we fall when we fall in love and it doesn't have to be this is all relationships so this can be someone that you are dating someone that you have been pining for and just doesn't the 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 affection or the love hasn't been reciprocated or you are disappointed by someone or like a family member or just a, a relationship that didn't work out that ended in your broken heart and this is inevitably going to happen because as human beings we're not perfect we're pretty flawed um, in a good way in a bad way in a good way so in a bad way because it negatively affects um, who is around us or who that we love but in a good way you know our flaws make us beautiful and in, in the flawed places that's where we are to grow so when we fall in love or when we are in love with someone whether it be it could be anybody so I'm, I really want to make it clear that I'm not talking about just intimate physical relationships I'm talking about all types of relationships it could be parent child sister brother sister sister um, boyfriend girlfriend 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 whatever it is friendships whatever there you're entering into um, a really sacred and vulnerable place because when you find something that you love in someone or you are born into this world loving this person let's say if it's a parent it comes with a certain level of trust and it comes with a certain level of openness and vulnerability the reason why this place is vulnerable is because when we love someone there comes with a certain level of expectation um, and respect that is needed and a level of importance in that person's life and sometimes where we feel like we should be in that person's life or how we feel that we should be treated, sometimes it's not matched with how we are actually treated or where we fall in their lives. Or sometimes we're not loved the way that we know that we are deserved to be loved. Or sometimes we're not loved as much as we love that person and for that we find pain. And to love another person is the most vulnerable place ever that we will ever experience in our lives honestly to put ourselves out there is a vulnerable place to be in and to love another person is to and ask for that love in return or hope for that love in return is a vulnerable place to be in and to not receive that affection or not to not receive that love back there is no pain that is like that. That There is no pain that matches that feeling. When affection or when, a lo when love is not reciprocated, when it's not mutually given or received, or our trust is violated with the person that we love, that is the moment when we emotionally have a breakdown, or not a breakdown, but that is the moment that we feel pain. And like I said before, that pain is unlike any other. So what happens is, as a natural reaction, we will shoot this barrier, this wall up, that will instinctively protect us from being loved or to love another person. At, at least we attempt to try not to love another person. That way we don't experience that same pain. But what happens is, is that by putting that wall up, 
it is inevitable for us as human beings walking on this earth with other human beings who are walking on this earth who are spectacular and everybody is so lovable we are inevitably going to love another person. So to put that wall up and to try and protect yourself and act as a, as a barrier to prevent someone else from loving you or from you loving them, it's a futile, it's, it's completely futile. You are inevitably gonna fall in love again because there, it, love abounds. Love is why we are here. So in a, when we put this wall up, it's an attempt to block out, right? In order to protect ourselves because there is no way in hell that we ever want to experience what it felt like to love someone and not have that love returned. We will do whatever it takes to never feel that way again. And that's why that wall is there so that we walk around with this barrier that is prevent protecting us, preventing us from ever having to experience and to feel that broken heartedness, that feeling ever again. But what happens is, like I said before, is that we are inevitably going to love another person. But if we never heal that wound inside of us, what happens is the body, the subconscious mind, the heart instinctively knows, I have to heal this place that was hurt, that was damaged. I have to heal or else I cannot love and receive the way that I want to because this place is fractured. And because this place within my heart is fractured, I cannot the heart knows that it will not be able to love in the full capacity that it was born and created and designed to do. And you're still sitting there with this wall up preventing, you know, another love or to uh, prevent another heartache from coming into your life, right? So we hear all the time, you know, when we put these walls up to protect ourselves, we're really just isolating ourselves from experiencing love again. And there's, tr there's truth in that. But people, but I mean, think about it. People who experience a heartbreak, they do enter into another relationship. They do end up loving or they end up going back to that same person looking for that love again and they find that they find disappointment. And the same thing repeats, it repeats, it repeats. It's because the mind and the heart are still trying to figure out how to heal the wound that once was. Okay? So it goes and it searches and it finds what it was that is an exact replica, maybe in a different package, but almost an exact replica of what it was or who it was that hurt me or you so that it can go back and try again to get it right and to heal and to feel better so that we can give it another go and try it again. But because we have that barrier up, because we have that wall, what are we to do but to make that same mistake again because that part of us is protected and that part of us doesn't want to experience that pain again. So we put that wall up in order to prevent it from happening, but we're still attracting and we're still walking through this earth and bouncing off of people and colliding into other people who we are inevitably going to love. So we have to make an active decision. Do we go in and face our heartache and face our pain and confront it so that we can learn from it, grow from it, experience it, evolve in it, transform from it, right? Or do we keep that place protected and walled off and hide in an attempt to protect ourselves from experiencing love again, which you can't, you can't do, honestly, you, you, you can't do that. Number one, that dooms you to a life of loneliness. Number two, we're not born on this earth. We're not here to be alone. We. We as human beings, we, we instinctively need each other. We have to have love. There's no way of escaping that. So what you are trying to avoid is something that is unavoidable. So let's rest in that knowledge. And you protecting yourself is to keep people away from you, to keep yourself from experiencing pain again. But what you really want is not to be alone. What you really wanted was to be loved and to love someone and have that love to be returned back to you. That is what you really want. So you have to be honest about that. So this is the part where you're like, well, Jess, <laughs> easier said than done. Like, what do I do? Like, that's why I'm watching this video right now. How do I heal my heart? And from that, there are many, many, many different ways to heal the heart. And I will share with you what I have had to do. And I'll share with you what I believe works. And, um, what I encourage and what I 
recommend for others to do, and that is to confront that place within yourself. And you have to be bold, you have to be honest, you have to be open again, and you have to trust. And that's the biggest thing you really have to trust. So when you look back, and some of us, the place that wounds us is so far in our history, where it happens in childhood, where it be our fathers leave us, or our mother abandoned us, or our mothers didn't love us the way that we, you know, deserve to be loved because in that moment, that was all that they knew how to do. Or whether it be the relationship where you were cheated on, or there was lying, or whatever the case may be. But you have to at least find the place where it began. Find it. And relive it back in the subconscious mind or and bring it from, I'm sorry, bring it from the subconscious mind into the conscious mind and relive it and go back into those places, right? And look at yourself, acknowledge who you were in that moment and what it is that you were expecting. And it's a very painful process, but you have to look at it openly, honestly, and say, and look at yourself, this is what I wanted, this is where I was at, this is what I was feeling before I realized that there was a betrayal, and this is what I felt like afterwards, and this is what I was expecting, but this is what happened. This is how I dealt with it. This is how I didn't deal with it. This is how I was broken, and acknowledge that place. So you have to go back to the moment or moments where you were disappointed um, or let down or abandoned. You have to return back to that place, right? So this is you focusing on yourself. Second, you have to focus on the other person, right? We're going to draw our attention to the other person. What was that person then? What did that person represent for you? Who did you want them to be? What did you expect from them? What did they give you? What did you need? Okay? And then realize that that person is a flawed human being, okay? In that moment, they did all that they could with what they knew, with what they had. And you either have to make the choice to forgive them, which is really important for you to forgive them for what it is that they did or didn't do for you, or you make a conscious decision to understand, to attempt to understand why it is that they did what they did and realize that what they did to you really probably had nothing to do with you. So if they were unable to love you, or if they were unable to give you their time and attention, if they were unable to be there for you, if they were unable to be loyal to you, all of that, even though it revolves around you, it has nothing to do with you. So if you have a parent that has left you, or abandoned you, or was selfish, it wasn't because you it wasn't because of something that you did or didn't do. It was something that they could, couldn't, they did not have it within them to give to you. Even though you do deserve it. You did deserve that love. You did deserve that attention. You deserve to be valued. And they couldn't find it within themselves to give that to you because of whatever it was that they were lacking. And that's something that I realized within my own self and my own heartbreaks. It had nothing to do with me because I was just an innocent child, okay? I I cannot control what others give to me because I'm just a child. And I cannot I know what it is that children are supposed to deserve and what children are supposed to receive. And I did not receive that. And I still some I still don't receive what it is that I feel that I deserve to receive and that is my pain that is for me to experience but I am lovable I am a lovable human being I would readily give my own love and affection to this other person but it's debatable if I would be able to receive that in return but that has nothing to do with me I did not create their lack of love for me. There was nothing that I could do, whether it be I be a perfect child or whether I be um, easy as a child, whether I be present or there. There is nothing that I could do to get the love, receive the love that I know that I should have 
received. It had nothing to do with me, and the same is true for you. Sometimes people are not able to be there, and we may not know or understand why that is, but it is what it is. Like, sometimes they're just not able to give to us what we should have received, or they're not just, they're not able to give us that love and affection, or attention, or loyalty or importance in their, in their life, but that does not take away from your importance as who you, whoever you are. It has everything to do with what they struggle with. It has everything to do with their demons. It has everything to do with their history or what they've received. If they were not able to love you in the way that you deserved, then they probably have not received that love and affection that they deserved. And it keeps on going. It's a cycle that keeps on going. But that is where the cycle ends. This is where you now take control of the reins of your life and you make a conscious decision to do better, to be better, to try again, to love again, to put yourself out there and to continue to be vulnerable. This is where the cycle ends. This is where the new beginning begins. So you've acknowledged the place where the pain is born from. You acknowledge the birthplace of your pain and your suffering and what is keeping you locked off and protected and keeping you from loving another and keeping you from opening your heart open to another or to experience and to receive love. So we're able to do that and that in itself is not an easy task because now after all of that you probably are in a place where you are brought back to that, that, that spot where you are crying, you are broken, you're, there's emptiness within your heart. So that is the place where we're at, and that's not an easy place to be at, and I acknowledge that. But this is where the birthing begins. This is where the healing has a chance to grow, and this is where the heart takes a deep breath and it sighs in recognition. Thank you for coming back to this place so that we can acknowledge it, and you can like I said before, you can make the choice to forgive the person for not loving you in the way that you deserved, but you can at least understand their action had nothing to do with what you did or who you are, right? So you are still, you now know that you are just as lovable as everybody else on the face of this earth um, and so deserving of love and affection. And now that you know that you are deserving of love and affection, you now are going to love yourself for a good amount of time and hopefully this becomes a lifelong habit and a lifelong um, instinct of yours is to love yourself in the way that you know that you deserve to be loved okay and I'm gonna be straightforward and honest with you and look you dead in your eyes and tell you that this is not gonna be oh I'm gonna treat myself to spa treatments and to get a massage and to eat only healthy food or to hug myself every morning for a week. And that, I mean, if you do that, that is awesome because I've done that before, but it cannot be just a week, okay? It's gonna be a process. You're gonna get in the habit of loving yourself in the way that you deserve to be loved. Why? Because you have not experienced it with that broke, whoever it was that broke in your heart, who broke your heart, you have not experienced it with them and that wound is still there affecting you today. You may not have even experienced it at all, which is even more reason for you to put that attention back on yourself and love yourself in the way that you deserve to be loved. So I'm currently 27 years old, but within me is that six-year-old little girl or that seven-year-old girl or from up to age 10 or 13 or 18 where I was suffering. That little girl still resides within me and she is still healing, she is still learning, she is still growing, she still has to process her pain when it flares up, when she has those temper tantrums, that little girl within me, and she has those temper tantrums because something was hit on, a place that was vulnerable for her, for her was hit on and I have to go back as the adult Jessica and go back in and comfort the little me, my inner child, and the same is true for every single person on the face of this earth, especially adults, especially adults who have never confronted that place, that time when their heart was abandoned and ruined or 
stepped on or disregarded or left in lack. Something that helped for me was to carry a photo of my younger self and to look at my the photo of myself my my as a child and just communicate with her Jessica what is it that you needed what is it that you need today what, where where is your suffering where do you hurt what do i need to get for you okay as adults we become so accustomed to serving other people. In our jobs, we have an expectation and we have a role and we have a duty and we have a service that we need to provide in order to exist, okay? So this creates a condition that perpetuates the pain that once was. Think about it. If we do not put ourselves in a place of service where we are serving other people, we are not able to receive what it is that we need monetary value, meaning that we don't receive payment if we do not provide this service, but we ourselves are in lack. That is, that is huge. That is an aha moment, really. That is an aha moment. Think about it. Like, really think about it. We wake up every day and we put on our suit or we put on our jackets or we put on our work outfit and we go out and we have to serve another person. We have to serve in our jobs. We have to give to others. We have to provide customer service in order to receive a paycheck so that we can exist, so that we can pay to live. That way we can pay for our groceries. That way we can eat. That way we can have benefits. That way we can have a shelter over our head, right? We have to do these things. When we, w when we ourselves are currently in a state of lack. So this is even more reason for us to take that time to look at the photo of ourselves and serve ourselves. Jessica, what is it that you need today? What is it that you need? Do you need playtime? Do you need sleep? Do you need a hug? Do you need to be held? Do you need to cry? These are honest questions that I've had to ask myself and that I encourage for you to ask yourself, your tiny little self, your inner child, because like I said before, like as we become adults, we get so caught up in our jobs and our services and our duties that we do not ever take the time to acknowledge whatever it is that we need. And we go through about things that are expected of us, whether it be going out drinking with our friends or going to work or going for that power jog because we heard on the news that it's good for our health and we have to do this for a higher being when on the inside we never took that moment to ask ourselves what is it that you need to feel good what is it that you need and feeling good is just as equally as important as doing whatever it is that is expected of you by the outside world so once we take that time to Ask ourselves the question, little Jess, inner child, what is it that you need? It's going to be a process of, of us acknowledging and recognizing that child. And some things that I have had to do is to go back to those places where the wound came and go back to that time, that place where the person that we love is walking out that door. And we're left there and we're like, was it me? What did I do? What do I do from here? We're left in that moment. And you have to subconsciously go back to that place. And as an adult, you have to sit down with your inner child and sit with them and have that discussion and be and explain to your younger child, this has nothing to do with you. Their leaving has nothing to do with you. Their abandonment of you does not have anything to do with you because in their right mind, they would be here and they would love you and I love you. And look who you have become, okay? We're still working on this and I am here with you and let's work together. Give me a hug. Let me hold you. What is that you need? Let me hold your hand. Let's go for a walk. Let me take you to that place that you love. I know you love pancakes. Let's go get some of those. So you have to have that dialogue with your inner child and keep having that inner dialogue. And I challenge you to do this every single morning and every single night. In the morning, you look at the photo of yourself and you say, Little Jess, what is it that you need today? What is it that you're asking for? And that at some point in that day, you acknowledge and you keep your promise to that little girl or that little boy that lives within you. At the end of, at the, end of the night, you say, okay, all that has happened, what is it that you need now? And that you go and you validate that, whatever that may be, okay? And you keep on doing this consistently until you come to a place where you know that you are able to freely and openly love yourself. 
once you get to that point, okay, and it may take a little long for everybody, it is different. It doesn't matter how big of the pain, sometimes it's short for you to heal from it, sometimes it's longer. It is what it is. So just acknowledge and respect that process. But once you get to that point when you are able to love yourself, then in turn, you are ready to love someone else. And that is when you open your heart up openly, okay? That is when the, that, that wounded place within you is now healed and will not actively search and seek for someone who is a, re a replica of the person who left you and abandoned you or who, who was selfish and never gave to you what it is that you know, that you deserved as a little child, as a little boy, as a little girl, what you deserved. You're not actively seeking for that in other people and you are now open and free to love someone else the way that they deserve to be loved without expectation. And you are now able to receive that love and affection in return without expectation and that is when you will find that love of your life and that's when the door opens okay so I just want to say to you all right now I love you all so much from the bottom of my heart and I want to say thank you so much for again taking the time to sit and listen to me I really hope that this helps to heal your heart I've been there and it is my duty here on earth and it is my pleasure to be able to talk and to help walk you through this process so that you are now able to love yourself and then to love again okay so love and light to you all I will be posting videos weekly because I am passionate about it and I'm called to do it and I'm having so much fun I um, if you have requests or things that you are healing from or things that you want me to talk about or to address Feel free to comment them down below <coughs> or email me at bahadilife at gmail.com or you can visit my website bahadilife.com and there's a whole bunch of comment boxes where you can leave comments or reach out to me. I am so accessible. But either way, love and light to you all and I will definitely be talking to you soon.